Happy holidays, dear listener. So you've got your main presents sorted, right? Right? But there's a few coins left over and you've got an imaginary stocking to fill. Pray tell, what does one do with such a dilemma? Well, my suggestion, albeit a somewhat biased one this holiday season, is to listen to old Benji Claus, who's here to provide you with 10 excellent ideas for gifts in the small box category. They're not all commensurately low in complexity, but they are high on space saving. So please do take a pew and listen to me count to 10 like an educated elf. Number one, Mint Cooperative is a spiritual follow-up to Mint Works. Same aesthetic, same tiny tin. But this, as the title suggests, sees everyone on the same side as you tackle, and I'm not joking here, oral hygiene-inspired foes that are trying to plaque up your fair Mintopia city. You simply cannot fault how much they've crammed into this micro box for this area movement and dice rolling game. You see, each turn you'll be rolling said random number generators and using them to take actions that correspond to the facings on the dice. That's mostly a variation on moving your pawns and stopping each town card from getting overrun. But there are special abilities you can use to aid your efforts and curveballs that are thrown in your way to stop you. And with different villains varying things up a bit, I'm not sure how much more you could ask for in such an echo box. Number 2. Blitzkrieg World War II in 20 minutes is a surprisingly thematic distillation of the history changing conflict, where both the Allied and German forces are vying for control over a handful of geographical theatres of battle. That makes this one part area control and one part bag building, as you play tokens representing land, air and sea forces at each different location. It's then a game of tug of war for either partial or complete control. In the mix you'll also have finite communal spaces available to deploy forces and only certain tokens can be placed in some spaces. Extra resources and special weapons will also wind their way into your available supply and because information about what units your opponent has at any time is kept hidden, a game of push your luck and strategically selecting how thin you can spread your forces is where it's at. Number 3. Long Shot The Dice Game It's actual horse racing in a small box. With a decent smattering of thematic action that sees you directly through the horses you back and indirectly via the dice that are rolled, witness a wooden GG race for the ages. You'll definitely be surprised by the sporty nature of the strategy on offer, and the gambling elements are as tension laden as you'd hope. And the reason for that is that you do have a certain amount of influence on the outcome. Increasing the movement of your chosen buck on future dice rolls, and even buying into certain horses that grant you passive abilities and extra points should they finish on the podium. A number of choices you make aren't binary either. You've got X amount of coin to spend, and so you might go all in on the winner or just dip your toes on multiple instead. Seriously, there is a lot of strategy to be had here. Number 4 Shot and Totten 2 is believe it or not the sequel to Shot and Totten 1 where the one was silent. And in the intervening 20 odd years they've taken symmetry and said ah 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 let's take this shot on Lark and make it asymmetrical. You see one of you plays the castle defender and one the attacker and in this hand management game with numbered cards your job as the latter is to breach the walls defences in multiple locations once or twice in the same place. To do that you'll alternate playing cards on your side of said wall trying to lay down combinations of cards that are ultimately more valuable than what your opponent can mathematically muster. It's rare to have such a simple tenet work so well with one side playing proactively and the opponent reactively and it also manages to bring a sense of agency and mind games to boot. Number 5 The Crew Mission Deep Sea is the follow up to the quest for Planet 9 and whilst it doesn't reinvent the wheel it does build on the cooperative trick taking game that took the hobby by storm and provide you with more variations of silent but tactical mission based gameplay. But for those of you not au fait with what's come before, you as players sit around the table and attempt to wordlessly meet the scenario's win condition through deliberately losing tricks and then trying to win them when the time is right to obtain the cards you need to meet your objectives. 
in so doing enabling you all as a team to win. Yes, this means to give your teammates clues about what's in your hand and how you can manipulate the outcome to get to where you need, but it's the quick fire rounds with variations on a theme that brings a fresh take on an age old playing cards mechanic. Number 6, Mini Rogue, takes a stab at distilling a dungeon crawl down to bare bones and without a pen and paper in sight. So there's no minis per se and no tiles, but there are lots of cards and a few dice just so you don't feel completely out of your element. Each level of the dungeon is represented by nine room cards. Some see you facing traditional challenges such as monsters and traps, and others might yield treasure or the ability to buy stuff to keep you alive. But most rooms still require a target number be rolled to determine success or failure. So you've got the very rudiments of encounters you might find in a bigger box, character progression back to basics, and quick paced action to keep your mind from wandering, leaving you with a game that made quite a few smart choices in what to keep and what to throw overboard whilst keeping the essence of what you came for. Number 7, Rift Force, is a two player out of the box card game that sees you duelling with your opponent across multiple battlefields. So far so meh, but what sets this game apart is the variable powers and playstyles of each of the factions you'll be drafting from at the start of the game. You'll each end up with four that will require varying degrees of finesse to unlock their combined potential and synergies. And each card represents an elemental that you place up to three of each turn, but the nuance lies in the need to place them all in one or across three adjacent rows. Each bring their own base power and any secondary abilities to bear, but only when you activate these cards by discarding cards from the same suit from your hand. So as much as the action takes place on the board, it's how you manage your hand and sequence how you play cards that will determine the victor. Number 8, Radlands, is another two player card slinger, this time set in the midst of a post apocalypse and where synergy is absolutely positively the what and the how to, With both players defending three lanes that represent their base from their opponent's attacks, you'll need to find the right balance of super fortifications and making sure none of your defences will be a walkover. The neat twist here is that both of you draw from the same deck, and each of the cards are multifunctional, either played as an active card to the table or discarded for its junk effect. That communal deck and the lack of deck construction in the game means this is simple and elegant as both a good and bad selling point depending on your perspective, but rest assured the depth within that stringent framework makes this game extremely compelling and a nice alternative to the usual duelling fare. Number 9, Fault, sees you playing an overtly kids themed deck building game. But don't let that accessibility fool you because although you might be trying to build the coolest fault in the land, to do that you'll need friends in your crew that enable the actions you take on your turn and allow you to copy other players actions on theirs. But those cards that you don't use might feel unwanted and able to be recruited by other players, leaving you with decisions decisions when it comes to holding onto cards that might get sniped or waiting for the stars to align for that perfect turn all the while keeping tabs on what actions of yours your opponents might benefit from copying. Points are up for grabs in a myriad number of ways and uncovering all the neat combos that will put you in with a chance to win is half the reason you'll get a kick out of this game. And number 10, Tiny Epic Dungeons is definitely the former, debatably the bit in the middle and most assuredly the latter, but really another dungeon crawl in a stocking fuller list? A modular board that gives me Dungeon Quest vibes sees you and your party engaging in the usual room to room action, facing minions and overcoming traps, all in a race against the dimming of your torchlight. The dice rolling enables a great deal of teamwork, with you dice manipulating, damage dealing and healing in equal measure, and each mission is broken down into two parts, the regular dungeon diving and then the boss encounter is how you do things tiny and epic. Making sure you're geared up and ready to do battle with the big bad just in time for the light to fade adds up to a nice little miniaturised dungeon crawl to get your teeth into. 
And that there is how you do Christmas holiday gifts, scaled down style. Okay, okay, you can't fit all of these into a stocking, but they're still all of the affordable and small box variety. If you got a kick out of these, be sure to check out our previous year's entries in this year category. And if you missed them, we got you covered with light, medium and heavyweight games already this year. So all that leaves is for me to wish each and every one of you a very happy holidays. Alas, I have been the voice of Ball Game Santa and this video has ended.